With us is Darlene Bailey, the uh, Director of Athletics at William Jewell College. As she joins us here on the High V Halftime Report. Tim Crone is back with us as well, and uh, it has been a very good first half of play. Uh, Tim, I'll start with you. Uh, here in the first half, uh, as the Cardinals executed a lot of things. Well, that's the best start we've had all year long, without a doubt. Did a great job, and I tell you what, we've got to kind of run and catching them, uh, running the inside, outside, uh, doing a nice job as far as uh, their coverage. They're really struggling. They're really struggling against our offense, and uh, hopefully we can continue to do that. Darlene Bailey joins us, the director of athletics here, and, and a weekend that has uh, it's shaping up as a really nice weekend for Cardinal athletics with a split of soccer matches yesterday, volleyball wins yesterday, football's off to a great start here in the first half, and I'm sure there's more. It As is. There always tends to be. Absolutely. Now, this is one of those games where you don't really want halftime. Can we just no. keep playing? <laughs> yeah. Actually, first time this year that we don't want halftime. That's right. Because they right. are really struggling covering us. That's right. No, it, they are looking really, really good out there today, and it's really fun to watch. And they're having a good time, so hopefully we stay at it. We have a bunch of people on the other side here. Of course, it's not too far away from the Jewel campus. I uh, was It was pointed out to me there's a tailgate over there or was. Uh, what's it been like on the uh, far side today? It's been good. You know, people are excited. We have a few students that drove down. It's fall break, and then we've got a lot of parents. Our parents do a great job of following. Uh, about you all can't see, but about uh, two minutes before game time, I think we had more folks here than they did. Oh, is that right? Now it's filled in a little bit, but our parents travel really well, and they did have a tailgate across the way, and they're a friendly group. They get to know each other because of uh, coming to the away games, and they have a really good time. Yeah, and uh, like you said, a good crowd over there right now. SBU's on fall break also. Do you think that hurts their crowd a little bit? Oh, absolutely. There doesn't appear to be many students here. I can't remember. I don't think. I can't remember if they had a band last time we were here or not, but they don't have a band today. Don't really appear to have a whole lot going on except for the game itself. It's pretty quiet on campus, looks like. Yeah, it does. Well, we are uh, more than halfway through the semester. Basketball starting up here in a little bit, so it's that transition season where I don't even know where to start here. Where do you want to start? Well, we, we, talk, see, we do talk about this every year. It's a really uh, busy time. It's a time when uh, the fall sports are winding down and the, spring, uh, the winter sports are starting up and uh, – it's a busy place in the Maybe Center and outside and uh, a time when our training staff is uh, running crazy. And uh, they do such a great <laughs> job for us that I, I thought about them as I was driving down here today because they're trying to cover a lot of practices. Yeah, how do they do it? I mean, really, Darlene, how do they do it? It's tough. Well, they, they put in a lot of hours because uh, to be in that profession, you really have to be dedicated to the students, which they are. So they come in early. They stay late. They do the extra things to help the students rehab, you know, Knock on wood, um, we don't have a lot of injuries in our department overall. We've got a few here and there like always, but our uh, training staff works very closely with our strength coach. Our coaches buy into to the philosophy, and that translates into student athletes who are ready to go, taking good care of themselves, and, and our trainers that do a nice job of rehabbing when we do have an injury. Well, you know, just talking to all the co coaches across the board when I come over and do this show on Monday, and I'm talking about all sports, they were talking about how your athletic injuries are really down compared to what they have been. And I've noticed it like conditioning-wise early in the year when we had, remember, a year or two ago we had the cramp uh, thing going on all the time. I could really – those guys really have done a good job for you. you got to be pleased as an AD in that situation. Absolutely. I mean, you know, we have a great strength coach in Adam Lang. Charlie Miller is in his second year as our head trainer director of our sports medicine program. And when those two individuals work together on a student athlete's uh, conditioning plan and rehab plan and then certainly work with the coaches, and then we have a culture where our student athletes buy in. I mean, they, they think that those guys are the greatest in the world. They do. If they say something, our students are going to listen, and then that just translates into fewer injuries. And, you know, there's a little luck along the way, I'm sure, as well. But, but we really are in a good place this fall. Um, and uh, – you feel really good about that because their goal, all of our goals, is to have the student athletes on the field being able to play the game. You bet. Hey, can I jump in too? Because I've seen do. Darlene. We've <laughs> yeah, just been do. in passing. Homecoming, I thought was the largest crowd maybe in the nine years I've helped do this with you guys. You had to be pleased about that too. Homecoming was a great day for us. Um, they, they post uh, homecoming pictures on the, on the website, and um, the sequence of those pictures really – told the story of how I felt. There was a lot of pictures of folks before the game, during the game, some of the award ceremonies we had, and then the final picture was uh, 
Coach Weigel getting doused with the, the mm -hmm. water after the game because you truly do culminate a good homecoming if you can win your football game. And we did that for the first time in five years and it had a great feel. We had a lot of students out that day. We had a lot of alums back. It was a beautiful day and it our was. campus is gorgeous. And so I even had parents come up to me today because I wasn't at the game last week come up and say, oh gosh, homecoming was so great. Not just the game, but everything. But if you win the game, it makes all the other stuff better. Got to win homecoming they got to win homecoming okay last question i don't know if you could even talk about this i haven't been up to snuff and all the politics yet at william jewel but you know, plans for next year you got some things in the uh, in the iron uh, you want to talk about those uh, possibility like the field and some of those things is that common knowledge or where are we headed on that sure well we're uh, we're in a process right now of identifying um just what some things will cost uh -huh. um we know that we need to put have a plan for for new turf and to improve our track uh, situation so we're actually talking to to vendors here in the next week about that um, the more immediate project that's uh, there's actually dirt that's been moved this week is our softball facility we are going to be putting up a um, a team room a restroom facility that's right there at the field and cool. also doing a lot of uh, grading dirt work that will make that facility much more accessible not only for the student athletes but for the fans that's been a, a an area that has needed some attention and um dirt work is um, one of those things you don't really see but you see the benefits of it and so we are getting started on that project and the plan is to have that building finished and all of the um, site work done to uh, be ready when the students come back in January and certainly ready for the season. That's great. I, of course, you got the new scoreboard. We do have a new scoreboard, and that, that's a fun story because uh, a group of alums uh, got together um, and had a golf tournament for about five years to uh, honor Coach Dave Besore, who um, tragically passed away in a car accident. But the players who played for him had a lot of really strong feelings about Coach Besore and wanted to do something related to Jewel football to honor him and honor his memory. And so um, they – we, had, we talked about the idea of a new scoreboard and the fact that we needed one, and, and they were very supportive of that. They're like, well, what, what can help students more on a daily basis than having a good scoreboard that uh, is functional and usable? So we, we got the scoreboard. We had a nice dedication ceremony on homecoming with uh, some of the former players, um, the Basore family. Um, Dave's two children were able to be there. And um, so that, that was a really nice day. And, again, it's, we're trying to improve our facilities just a little bit at a time here sure. and there. And um, it never happens as often as you like, just like you have a list of things you want to do to your house and you can't get to them all, but you try to do them as you can. And we're trying to focus on the things that um, impact the lives of the student athletes every day. Darlene, uh, to build on that a little bit, uh, with basketball season just underway, people will be coming into the Maybe Center for basketball. They may not notice it right away, but basketball has a new team room themselves uh, inside the Maybe Center. That's right. Um, back in the, the 80s when the Maybe Center was built, um, locker facilities were not really thought about the same way that they are today. Certainly there were not as many athletes in our program, not as much um, – demand for the kinds of locker facilities we need so we were able to convert what we have traditionally called our visitors locker room into a, a team room for men's basketball a few years ago we carved out part of the women's locker room and made it into a team room for volleyball and women's basketball men's basketball was the next step um, gracious uh, donations from several of our men's basketball alumni who are naming the lockers in that facility there you go and um, so that Larry Holly did a nice job of, of raising the funds for that getting a lot of his former athletes behind the project so that was another thing we did on homecoming was christen that project if you will and that facility will will be used primarily by men's basketball but all also, will continue to be used by visiting teams um, for volleyball and, and uh, officials is, is the main thing. So it's not going to get a lot of use. Men's basketball will have primary use of it. But, again, because of s some facility constraints we have, it, it will stay online as another facility. Change uh, venue here a little bit or change uh, topic a little bit. Uh, volleyball <coughs> wins yesterday, and for them, their sixth win of the year. The last two years combined, seven wins. So, And as I think you said, not on the air so much, but uh, in other places, this is a kind of a, a showcase for our volleyball team to see maybe how much they have grown playing in the GLVC GLIAC Challenge this weekend or That's crossover right. tournament. Yeah, this is an, an event unlike really any other uh, in any sport where two – actually three conferences now uh, that are in the NCA region that we're in, the GLIAC, the GLVC, and the GMAC, which is another 
smaller conference, but still part of our region. So the entire GLIAC, the entire GLVC, and I think two or three schools from the GMAC came together, and they're all playing volleyball all weekend against each other. And it's an opportunity for the best teams in, in our league to play the best teams in um, – the, the GLIAC and then on down the line. So it's an opportunity for us to see how we stack up overall as a conference, which is really important at the end of the year when the regional rankings are finalized and teams are selected for postseason competition. And it's, it's also, um, I think, a way for you to take a little bit of a break from conference competition. The coach to um, think about some things that uh, she'd like to do. Conference, ga conference uh, games are you know, a little bit different. So the non-conference competition, you can mix things up a little bit. And, and certainly um, you never win as many as you want to till you win them all. But Coach Reigns has done a really nice job of moving our program forward this weekend. So right now it's not as much about the wins as it is about building for the future. But when you go on the road and get a win against anybody, it's really good. And I guess I would add that I was really excited last weekend um, – and one of the reasons I didn't go to the football game, I stayed home and I was able to see us beat Drury in yeah, volleyball. Yeah, good, good win. It's always good you to bet. beat Drury and yeah. to see our program come, Especially make some progress. Especially if you're from Springfield and all the years you were down here, <laughs> you kind of like this. Well, I, you know, I went to school at Drury for two years, yeah. so I kind of like Drury, but I always like to beat them. And, and to see our program make progress, Drury's not a bad team. And so that was sure. a nice little move for us. But, uh, but as you said, Rick, we have a lot of things going on. I just got to – a text a little while ago that the swim meet's going well. Sometimes yes, you don't yep, know how uh, those things go at, until the end. Yep. But uh, we have a swim meet on campus today. Um, their season is underway. Basketball started practice on Wednesday or whatever day the 15th was. So, so they're going strong and certainly um, excited about their upcoming seasons. We'll have an exhibition or I guess a scrimmage um, next Sunday. So basketball season is upon us. Yep, absolutely. And as you said, swimming, which seems to stretch most of the year as their first real home meet, they had a scrimmage themselves, but uh, they are swimming today. Uh, cross country, they go to the GLVCs next week. They'll go next week. And uh, I know um, campus was very quiet yesterday morning, but the women's cross country team was running around the quad as they were finishing their run. And I think something about that is because no one's here, we're going to do this, is what mm -hmm. I took out of that. <laughs> and they were running around the quad um but the women's team um is getting stronger all the time they you know we say we're young but we're starting to see some of those students come into their own so i think there's the possibility we make a little move in the in the standings this year um for for women's cross country the men's team is still young and we've got some newcomers but i was pleased to see that a couple of our freshmen actually were our top scorers in the last meet that we were in so tom eisenhower does a, a wonderful job and he's He's reorganized his program a little bit, and he stepped back in to be more involved with the distance program because we've had a coaching change. And um, he's energized and excited about that, and um, it'll be fun to see how they do next week. Soccer has their final home doubleheader tomorrow of the regular season. They'll uh, take on Indianapolis. The soccer women winning yesterday, and Indianapolis will come in with a pretty poor record, a chance for us to make a move possibly toward a playoff spot on the women's side. Yes, they, they did. They had a really nice win, and, and it was our senior night uh, last night, even though it seems like we have a little ways to go, but that's just kind of how the calendar falls. But really nice win for them, um, and you're right. We have got another chance tomorrow, I think. And, and I'd like to say something about the men's team. You know, the, the men's team um, was an example last night of how you sometimes have to uh, overcome some adversity, and, and we uh, our goalie was not able to be with us for personal reasons, a family situation, and um, – a goalie that hasn't played much in our program stepped up, and, and I was really excited about the intensity that I thought our, our men's team had, especially the seniors that got out there early. And, and so you like to see that even if you don't have the final outcome you want. You want the students to feel good about what they're doing and play hard all the time. And even though the men didn't get a win, I thought they did a nice job last year. Yeah, week. and they did a nice job against a pretty good team. St. Joseph's yes. is pretty good in men's soccer this year. In fact, one of their better teams that they've had. Is that about it? I'm, I'm trying to think if we left out anything. You got, you got nothing going on, girl. No, there's not much going on. Well, you know, we just finished up the second or the first seven weeks of classes. We, we do go to school. Uh, so we <laughs> finished the That is kind of important. And it's fall break. So fall break's a little quiet, but uh, – you know, you know, as we make the transition, um, it's it's all good, and students are getting you know getting in the rhythm right. of classes and, and knowing it's fun to see them think about maybe changing their majors or focusing on a time when we're going to be signing up for classes for next semester, and and those who just got here as freshmen, you can really see the wheels turning with them, and that to me is one of the wonderful things I love about being at Jewel is that our students really are academically oriented, thinking about what they want to do for the rest of their lives, but also having the opportunity to have a great time um, 
pursuing their sport. Well, I know that you're about done with the interview, but you know there's not a prettier place around than William Joe College in the fall. I mean, that place is beautiful with the trees. And, you know, you get over there at a football game and you look up on campus. You've got a gorgeous facility. It is. And, you know, I I was reminded of that yesterday because I got to the soccer game early and was walking around the quad myself and looking at all the flowers. And and my son was with me and told him about coming down here today. And I said, I want you to think about this campus and then tell me what you think when you come down here because we are very, very fortunate. And then as the soccer game – got started and the moon came out and then um we actually uh had the stealth um that was going right to fly over the, the royals, royals game. the flyover we actually circled above our stadium for a while <laughs> for so a while. yeah it was a very yep. entertaining <laughs> evening but again uh, such a beautiful campus and we're so so fortunate um to come to work every day and our student athletes really appreciate it as well darlene bailey director of athletics joining us here at halftime thank you very much Let's have a great second half. Let's do it. Good yeah. talk to you, Darlene. Would, would be good to have one as good as the first half. Cardinals lead it 20-7, and our second half just around the corner. 